Cancer, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for March 2018. So, Cancer, I hope you guys are all signed up for your 30,000 um, subscriber gift that's going on until March 10th. Uh, all of that's in the description box down below, as well as Astrology 102, which will start in April and $3 Thursday. So, I hope that you are taking advantage of all of the good stuff that's going on. More details, of course, at stormygrace.com. All right, Cancer, so we've got some things going on this month. A couple of which have to do with planets going retrograde, so taking a little sleep time. So first of all, we've got Jupiter getting ready to take a retrograde. It's going to be happening on March 8th, going all the way until July. This is in the sign of Scorpio, and for you, this is in the fifth house. Now, because Jupiter is such a big, benefic planet, you know, I mean, he's the biggest planet we've got in our solar system. Even when he goes retrograde, you actually have the opportunity to still have opportunities, still have gifts, still have luck come your way, but it may really delay some of the blessings that you feel like you're getting. As well, when we get to the 14th of the month, Jupiter is going to come into a semi-square with Saturn, who's over here in Capricorn in your seventh house. And this is going to tell you that you've got to reorganize a relationship. You've got to reset it, reevaluate it, something so that you can take an opportunity to have some joy, right? You've got to restructure for the opportunity for joy, for advancement, for creativity, for expression, for true love, whatever it is. So this Jupiter retrograde energy is certainly going to put you in a position to be looking back over some things in your life so that you can move towards your fullest potential. Now on the 22nd, we've also got communication planet Mercury taking a retrograde. So yes, cell phone devices, technology, any upgrades you maybe want to do, contracts, all of those things start to get really iffy in terms of actual useful communication as well. A Mercury retrograde is infamous for bringing back old lovers, thoughts of old lovers, things like that. But whatever's going on, remember that a Mercury retrograde, just like any other retrograde, serves to push you back so that you can look, you can revise, re-edit, recreate, re-establish, redo something here so that you're free of that entanglement and you can be successful as you move forward. Now, for you, this is going to be happening in your 10th house. You're going to be looking over your career. This could also be a time where maybe, you know, if you haven't had excellent performance, you could be in front of your supervisors again. If you've had stellar performance, somebody could be re-looking over um, what you've been doing. But ultimately, because it's Mercury, you're going to also just be looking at how you're communicating, how you're making decisions, how you're going about doing the things that you're doing in order to have a successful career culmination. Now remember, career is also about soul level calling. What are you doing in the world? So you will certainly be reconsidering your impact that you're having in on your world and the direction that you're going. It's a really nice time for a new career direction, that's for sure. Now let's jump in and get to the dates of everything that's going on. As we're coming into the month right here on March 1st, we're actually going to be having the full moon happening in Virgo, which is going to put us in a position to reevaluate because it says something has to end, be acknowledged, or be adjusted. For you, this is going to be in the third house. So one of the things I keep thinking for you, Cancer, is that you are going to be letting go of some kind of thinking, right? Now, this encompasses in the third house all things communication, which includes contracts, um, negotiations, but it also includes a fair amount of anxiety. You may be like, no, thank you. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want my head spinning anymore, right? Um, in a business partnership, in a romantic partnership, and something like that, if you've had an ex-lover or a lover or a friend or something like that you've been communicating with and it's just toxic, this could also be a time where you're willing to put that down. But a lot of what I see for you is a mindset shift at this full moon, which I think is just gorgeous for you, Cancer. So take it on because wouldn't it be nice to not be so anxiety ridden? Wouldn't it be nice to not be so caught in the emotionalism of things and to just have a clearer perspective of all of these things that are shifting and going on? I think so. 
Now on the 6th, we've got both Mercury and Venus coming into the sign of Aries. Mercury moving into Aries speeds up communications, right? Um, it certainly does, but it also makes conversation very, very forceful. Venus in Aries here is not completely comfortable, but she's going to help to bring a little bit of butter to the table as well. All of these are happening in your 10th house along with Uranus up there. So again, you are looking at how you are moving, communicating, and what you are actually doing in the world. And this is far beyond the career cancer it's who are you in the world how are you showing up what kind of wife what kind of husband what kind of partner what kind of parent what kind of friend are you these are the questions you're answering and looking over this month now on the 8th Jupiter is going to take this retrograde in Scorpio and I talked a ton about that but on the 14th when Jupiter comes into that semi square with Saturn again I cannot tell you enough that you've got to restructure reorganize and recreate some relationships so that you have the opportunity to take advantage of freedom um, expression, true love, joy, all of those things, okay? On the 17th, we've got the new moon happening in the sign of Pisces, and this is lighting up your ninth house of faith, first and foremost, faith. You may have some spiritual questions coming to your table because it may be time to answer those things, right? This is a new moon. You get a fresh start here, and it is a moon energy, so you'll be very comfortable with this, I think. Now, for the rest of you, it could be about higher learning, education, broadcasting, putting something out, publishing that book, whatever it is, you can begin new. So if you are starting to study something new or you're maybe even just starting a new class in a continuation of series of something that you're doing, this is going to help you launch out there really well. So if you need a license, certification, philosophy, ministry, any of those things, you have a beautiful start here. Now, at the same time, on the same day, we've got Mars, our action planet, moving into Capricorn. So moving into your seventh house here. Mars wants relationships now, right? He's going to move towards relationships. He's going to move towards relationships because he sees that these relationships help him to achieve, right? Because Mars is going to have to act like a Capricorn. Mars says, we're going to go. This is our desire. This is what I want. This is what we're going to do. But the way you're going to get it done is by acting like a Capricorn. So you're going to be looking at the relationships in your life um, at this new start. You want this fresh start in your world. You want this fresh start with new big perspectives perspectives, maybe even some travel, which will require and bring in and move you towards some brand new relationships. On the 20th, the sun moves into Aries. On the 21st, we celebrate the astrological new year, lighting up your 10th house, but it's also just a fun, delicious time in the astrology world. We start our seasons over. I mean, it's just fresh start energy. So super suck it up, enjoy it. Be like a sponge during the season, Cancer, seriously. Then we've got that Mercury retrograde happening on the 22nd in Aries, going all the way until April. On the 31st, we've got the uh, full moon happening in Libra. Now, Libra is a partner-oriented energy. It's going to be at 10 degrees of Libra, and this is going to be in your fourth house. Now, remember the full moon say something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's going to be shift. So in your home life, and you are the ruler of home with women in your life, with your foundation, with your roots, all of these things, you could be starting to see a shift because you've got to come to the other side. Now, the other thing I keep thinking about um, is that you may be doing something that you need to to end or ease some level of chaos in your home home, family, real estate, property. And remember, the first home you will ever attach to, attack, or work on is the home that's here. So inside of you this month, you've got a mental shift. You've got a questioning shift about how you're showing up in the world, who you're showing up as, and if you're even enjoying that. And I think also the ties that bind you. And this will be a month where you can see what you need to do to let them go. How great is that to be able to travel, fun, free and anxiety less. <laughs> I think that those are all things that you would definitely like to experience. All right, Cancers, I think it's going to be a great month. I can't wait to see what revelations, epiphanies, and just changes come for you. So let me know in the comment section down below. Look forward to seeing you in any of the classes or any of the ways that we connect, including on Facebook. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in April.